So this is a keyboard we'll be using. It's an M Audio Oxygen 25. Now we could have chosen something uh, that might be a little more DJ like, like this one, the Nanopad 2. But that's already supported in Virtual DJ and will do reasonably good stuff if you use it with Virtual DJ out of the box. So that's no fun. So we have to go a little bit crazy and still use this MIDI keyboard. That also has keys, of course. So we'll, of course, try to map those to do some, some key play inside the software. Now, if we connect it to the laptop, like that, it's already Windows compliant. So when we look here, we can see that it says Architon 25 right out of the box. And of course, it's it lit up like that. And we're going to try to map all these pads, all the keys. This is going to be for, for effects, I think. This is going to be for some basic transport keys. Now, over here, the numbers and uh, the selector and stuff is actually for selecting what would in effect, in effect be other layers because that would, if when we select other layer or other banks and stuff over here, presets, we get uh, different MIDI codes sent into the software. So, uh, so that will in effect be layers if we wanted that. But in this video, we're just gonna map one layer of all, all this stuff. Now, if we take a look inside Virtual DJ and go into the settings, We can see we got the Archidin 25 up here as a custom mapping, but it has absolutely nothing down here. So for instance, if I change it to the keyboard, we have a tons of scripts down here, which is what will happen when you click uh, stuff on, on the keyboard. But if we move down to the new Archidin 25, everything's empty. So, the task at hand is now to uh, to map all this stuff. So how do we do that? Well, if we press keys down here, different keys, like the pads, we can see up here that we actually get told what's coming in, what's being clicked. So our job is simply to map one of these like this one, that's one of the paths, to any kind of action script that we like. So that's the task at hand. Another thing is that it's actually right now set to default deck, so we can uh, have it control both decks, and that can be nice, but in our little test here, we're gonna choose to always control the right deck, because that's what test, where our test is gonna be. So the first two buttons we're going to map is going to be the stop and the play button down here. Stop and play. And I think we're also going to add pause to the play button so we can do both play and pause on the button. So we, if we go back into virtual DJ up here, and we, for instance, start clicking the, the stop button down here, and look up here, we can see that it's sending MIDI codes. It's actually setting three kinds, setting a slider and a jog and an encoder. And rule of thumb is that the encoder ones are good for buttons and the slider ones are good for sliders and knobs. So in this case where it's a button, we're going to map the encoder one. So it's up over here. Going to put in stop for that one. And we'll go back down here, press the play button. Up here again. Get three again. Encoder one. Go down here. Put in play. Pause. Sorry. This right here. 
Can I save that? Can I try and test it? So I have a track loader. So go down here, press play, and it plays, and pauses, and plays, and pauses, and plays, and stops, and goes back to the to the cue point. I'll start and play again. So that works. So that's basically how we're going to do all the mappings for the rest of the video. So for the two other transport keys, we're going to map uh, a toggle. So we can toggle smart queue on and off. That'll help us later on when we play the keyboard keys. So I press one of them. I get this over here, pick an encoder. And I put in smart queue to toggle smart queue on and off. And for the one that has an icon that looks like a loop, might as well add a loop. So I click that one, select it over here. And let's just make it a toggle for loop one, one beat, like that. Now we might as well also map the giant slider in the middle of everything that looks like a master volume to master volume. So move the slider. So then we pick the slider and tell it that it's master volume, like that. And the final button we have uh, on this segment of the controller, the keyboard, also map that one. So I, I pick it. So what do we want to use that one for? Well, we're also going to use that for a toggle, so, uh, so we can lay down toggle between two modes when we play the keyboard a little later. So I'm going to assign it to a variable and toggle that variable. So like that, we toggle a variable called keys variable. Then there are the, uh, the eight pads, and I think I'm going to assign the four top ones to do samples and the four bottom ones to do hot cue one to four. So if I click the first of the top ones, you can see I get bottom of 50. So I'll select that and I'll tell it to do sampler pad one, like that. And I'll do the other three ones later. So if I then select the first one of the button, then I get button 36. And in here, I'll put hot cue one, like that. And again, do the three other ones later. Then there are the keys. Uh, and if I click the, the C key right in the middle of the keyboard, I get button 72. So what do I put in there? Well, I put it, could put in key zero. So what will that mean? Well, that'll mean that if I have changed the key, it'll go back to not having changed the key of the track. So will this mean that if I played the C, that it'll play the track in C? No, it means it'll play it in the original key. So that would be one option. And then if I play the C sharp, like that, I'll put in key one. So that would, of course, take it up one half node. But then there was the matter of the toggle variable I just did. So, if, so what, what am I going to do with that one? Well, if I go back to 72, I still want to do that. But then if my variable is set, I want to also do a hot cue. So what will that do? Well, if the variable is set, each time I change the key, it'll trigger from the last hot cue place. And if it wasn't set, I'll be able to change the key, in this case back to zero, but to any key uh, without doing the hot cue. So I can more uh, fluently play through the track. So both will have its purposes. I'll demonstrate that later. 
Then there are the knobs we want to use for effects. So if we turn one of those, the first one, we get a slider we can use. So we use that and we add some script to it. So what does this script do? Well, it selects the color effects, in this case, cut, and it will activate the filter in case it's been deactivated for some reason. And then it also tells it that now you are actually the filter knob. So why does it say that it's also the filter knob? Well, in recent virtual DJs, it's actually the filter knob that's handling all the color effects. So that's how we do this. So now we just need to map the other, the other seven ones with different color effects that we like. Then there are the two large wheels down at the bottom left. And we definitely want to use those. So one of them, we're just going to map to filter. So in effect, that's just going to activate whatever color effect that was chosen most recently. So we now have a huge knob for that. The other one is called pitch. So we want to do something with pitch on it. So it's actually called pitch in here. So we would just put pitch, but then we would uh, just do whatever pitch range that's currently selected. So I'm going to boot pitch range 100% and then pitch so we can do some pretty extreme pitching with it like that. So with a bit of work, filling in all the blanks that we left out, we now have all the mappings. So we have some of the transport keys up here, the toggle. We have all the, the filter ones for the different color effects the master volume, we have all the keys here. We have the pitch, we have the alternative filter, we have the hot cues, and we have the pads. Okay, I'm an apron smart clay. This means I can do this. In time. And then I enable the hot cue on the keys. So I do this now. It's still going to be time. I disable. It's my key option. And I disable the hot cue part of the keys so that I can play with it. Like this. Do the effects. And because they're in the same slot, they take over. So I don't have to do the first one but to the next one. Now, because regular filler was the last one I chose, the mark will also be that.
Oke dulu. Nah, pitch. Sandals and stuff. And so now going. So that was most of the stuff that was mapped.